Jonathan Kaminga has taken the leap in year 3. Over his last 13 games, he's averaging 23.5 points per game, 6.2 rebounds per game, and 2.5 assists per game on 58.7, 43.8, 76.9 splits, and a 65.32 shooting percentage. The former 7th overall pick is showing us why he was a touted prospect. It really feels like he's putting it all together, and the result is being the second best player on the Warriors in his third NBA season. Which is something that should excite Warriors fans in a year that's been up and down to say the least. Because I think the Warriors just found their next star. But quickly before we go any further, if you're new and like basketball, I'd really appreciate if you would like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways to help me on the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and I'll be reaching my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend to others. Anyways, let's talk about Jonathan Kaminga. Kaminga has a very good physical profile, and that's been the case since he entered the NBA as well as before the NBA. He's 6'7", 225 pounds with a 7 foot wingspan. He's a great athlete, he has good speed, great physicality, vertically he's very explosive, I will say that I think his athletic profile fits best as a forward rather than on the wing. I think there are some limitations in his fluidity that might hold him back from playing the three full time. But at the same time, I don't think it matters because I've always viewed him as a natural power forward. And most forwards in the NBA aren't able to match up with this kind of athletic profile. He's always been physically dominant. But what's really impressed me, and we'll talk about it as this video goes along, is how he's leaning into that physical dominance as a player. Kaminga has seen growth in terms of his numbers that's been very evident. This season, he's averaging 15.6 points per game, 4.7 rebounds per game, and 1.8 assists per game on 53.5, 31.4, 72.1 splits, and a 60.5 true shooting percentage career highs in terms of points per game and also the first time in his career at the NBA level he's averaging double digit points. While you can somewhat attribute his improvements to more opportunity, his minutes per game and usage rate have gone up by almost 5 respectively, his volume has seen an increase, the fact that his efficiency has gone up compared to last season, even if it's marginal, is encouraging especially when the production increased the way it has for Kaminga, and the efficiency again has at least maintained, if not improved slightly. It's very encouraging, especially for somebody with his tools, what he shows on tape, and the fact that he's only 21 years old in his third NBA season. Jonathan Kaminga is a player that I believe is starting to really use his physical tools to his advantage and that starts with his rim pressing. He's shooting 72% at the rim this season on 5.5 attempts per game. He ranks 5th in the NBA in terms of efficiency among players taking at least 5 rim attempts per game. He's very good as a play finisher. 62.2% of his rim production is assisted on, but a 37.8% unassisted production rate at the rim is also really solid. He uses his physicality to his advantage, he runs the floor very well, he's an explosive vertical leaper, he absorbs contact incredibly well, he has a solid first step. I wouldn't say it's a freakishly good first step like Jalen Green or the Thompson Twins among others. But he makes his first step effective by using that physicality to overpower defenders. I think his rim pressure speaks to how effective he can be next to a playmaker, like a Steph Curry. He can attack and close out, he cut, bolts the basket, and he's growing on the ball attacking the basket as well. He's just a player that's unstoppable with any sort of momentum going downhill. Now, I do have some questions in terms of self-creation with Kaminga, which is something that has been a question with him for a while now. He kind of predetermines his moves, and he's gifted enough from an athletic and physical standpoint to find success with that type of processing. But a lot of his misses, I feel like, are because he tries to predetermine something and it doesn't work out in his favor. His counters need work, he's not the most fluid athlete ever, especially compared to how explosive and physical of an athlete he is. I will say that 
while it needs work, he also has shown improvement as a creator, ones that I think are very encouraging in terms of the strides he's made. I wouldn't say that he's reached the point he's good yet, but I also think that he's shown enough for me to believe he can be good at one day, even if it's just not there yet. Which is fine because it's only year three and his first year getting real consistent minutes at the NBA level. However, while I have reservations about his ability to create on the ball, I also think he has shown a ton of growth in terms of play discipline. Compared to prior years, it's clear his control has gotten better, which is why he's getting as much opportunity in producing the way he has this season. Even though it was limited or in the G League in prior seasons, when he got this amount of opportunity in terms of usage in the past, he was really inefficient and it felt like he was really forcing the issue. But now, I don't really see that. He's producing at about the same level of those samples in prior seasons where he got similar opportunity, but he's way more efficient over a more sustained period of time now. He still has bad plays here and there like any young player does, but I'm very encouraged by the fact he's playing to his strengths now, which is that ability to attack the basket, use his physicality, out-athlete other players. And that was something I had questions about entering the NBA. Prior to the NBA, it felt like he didn't play to his strength as much. He kind of settled a bit. So to see him address and improve in this area is really encouraging for his long-term outlook. I believe that three-point shooting will be the biggest swing factor for Kaminga. He's not shooting well on the season at 31.4% on 2.5 attempts per game. However, over his last 13, he's shooting 43.8% on 2.5 attempts per game and also 52.4% on 1.6 catch and shoot opportunities. Not a high volume sample to say the least, but progress nonetheless. I don't know if Kaminga will ever be great as an on-ball shooter. His lower body mechanics off movement aren't the best to say the least and it needs a ton of work, but I like his upper body mechanics a lot and I feel like he's fluid as a jump shooter when he gets his feet set. I think what needs to improve the most with Kaminga is shot prep and if he can improve his shot prep in terms of becoming quicker and more fluid, being more prepared when he catches the basketball, he can be a solid to good shooter. And given what he does as a rim pressure threat, I think he just needs to reach average levels of shooting ability, specifically as a catch and shoot guy, to reach his ceiling. Anything above that will raise his ceiling even more. Now, as a playmaker, I don't see much to suggest high level ability. I think he's grown in this area, but I don't see that playmaking hub potential here. I think as a passer, where he's going to thrive and has shown flashes is attacking the basket and finding an open man because he does have gravity as a rim pressure threat. And a lot of what you want to see out of him is driving kegs, maybe finding an open cutter, things like that. I don't think the fact that he isn't someone that projects to be a high level playmaker means he doesn't have a high ceiling. I don't think it's the end of the world that I don't view him as a passer the same way I view a Luka Doncic or for someone that plays the power through position like a Draymond Green type of passer. But I do think he can grow to be competent and be reliable and just making those basic reads that complement everything else he does in his game. At the same time, I do think the fact that he doesn't have this really high ceiling as a playmaker, someone that you see averaging like five plus assists per game potentially, I don't think that's there. I do think that might limit his ceiling to something that's below the superstar, even friend superstar range of outcomes. So how good do I think Jonathan Kamenga can be? Well, I think his ceiling as a player is an all-star. Somebody that I think could average 23, maybe even more than that points per game, get around a six, maybe seven rebounds per game. I think his athleticism suggests he should be able to get to around that range of rebounding outcomes, average around two to three assists per game, while also being really efficient from the field. 50 plus percent from the field overall, 60 plus two shooting percentage, things like that. 
I think how good of a suitor he becomes will determine if he reaches an outcome like that or any outcome he has. He needs to improve his shot prep in order to reach that full potential, but I have seen some improvement. I think he's in a good situation to improve as a suitor, being in Golden State, obviously. And I do think that the improvements he's made suggest that he's putting in the work to get better. At 21 years old, he's the second best player on the Warriors team. He's productive, he's efficient, he fits well next to Steph. At least this season, he's clearly been better than Klay Thompson. I think he's better than Draymond Green. I think he's been better than Andrew Wiggins. And I think that all is a positive sign for his long-term outlook. Because even after Steph is gone, because he's going to retire eventually, Kaminga can be a foundational piece. Because we'll see how long Steph plays, but considering that Steph is already 35 and how long NBA players continue to play. Kaminga's still going to be pretty young by the time Steph likely retires and still be at an age that he can be viewed as a foundational piece, especially if he continues to improve the way he has. I think there are some limitations with Kaminga. He's not the most fluid athlete. I think there are some limitations as a creator, and I don't really see the playmaking upside that suggests superstar but even if he's not a future superstar that doesn't mean he can't be a great player you can still be a great player without being a superstar you can be one of the 15 to 20 best players in the world and not be a superstar the ceiling for a superstar player is just so high and those requirements are just very hard to reach but i still think the ceiling is very high for kamenga obviously He's a young player for his third year. He was really young when he entered the NBA. And you don't find guys this young that are as physically gifted as he is. His production and efficiency are very encouraging. His growth mentally as a player is very encouraging. And I can't wait to see how he develops over the next few years. But that's the end of this video. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Again, haven't already? Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'm notified whenever I release a video. I'm making videos about basketball all the time. And liking and subscribing are the two best ways to help me out in the YouTube algorithm. Help support the channel. And I'll be reaching my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Let me know what you think about Jonathan Kamenga. How good do you think he's been? Do you think he's been the Warriors second best player? How high do you think his ceiling is? What do you see his NBA career turning out to be? Love to all of that in the comment section down below. But with that being said, have a nice day and I'll see you guys in the next one.